Good morning and welcome to Off the Press, a program where we take a look at the headlines in the papers and with the help of our guest, we make sense of it. Hope you're staying warm away from the rains that's falling in almost all parts of the country. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we have our guest today, a public affairs analyst, Mr. Ezekiel Etuk. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure always to be here. All right, well, let's kick things off with the Nation a newspaper. Uh, we have uh, Magu, panel widens probe. It has two riders, to uh, three riders to that story, actually. Top EFCC, NFIU officials to testify. anti graft chief grilled for 10 hours. We also have Salami Promises Fairness Justice. We now have another acting EFCC uh, chairman. Uh, that's the Mr. Salami there. Um, other headlines, APC screens Akere Dolu, EG, Keke Meke, Adelami, others. If we go to the top of the paper, Edo 2020 is very prominent, uh, written in red. Uh, you will see uh, Ize Yamu accuses PDP leaders of lacking tact. And then we have teachers reaffirm support for Obasaki. Uh, a little bit of sports is also captured there. Eagle Star. Onwachi test positive for COVID-19. Uh, federal government pulls JSS3, SS3 pupils out from y WASC. Now that should be WIAC now. Uh, Quara officials in isolation as COS is buried. Top official for test. Uh, you have the latest figure um, on the coronavirus globally. Uh, COVID-19 global figure is now over 12 million. Over to you, sir. Um, Which would you want to start you. off it, with? <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, looking at it, you have the Edo, you have the Magu story, you have the YX story, and then um, the rest of them. Let me start by saying that um, I'm really concerned about how we operate government and governance as a nation, referring to the Magu story. The Magu story has a lot of implications that we really don't look at as a nation. For us, it is about um, a man in office and um, being uh, paid back in his own coins. Uh, we go to interrogate his capacity, his competence, and everything. But at the end of the day, what are we doing? We are destroying ourselves as a nation before the international communities. We are telling the international, and you know how economies work. Um, in Nigeria, where we depend a lot on foreign inflow, you know, to be able to stabilize our uh, currency and the, the inevitable concomitants, we, we, we ask ourselves, how, what gives an investor the confidence to come into a country to invest? We ask ourselves so many questions, and we really don't understand the dynamics of governance. There's too much of politics. Let me take the Magu story. Are you aware that any investor wanting to come into this country looks at certain very, very, very fundamental variables, one of which is the legal system of that country? If I get in there, how am I protected? How am I sure I'll be able to do good business? How will I exit with my money? And all you know and hear is how corrupt and corrupt and corrupt and corrupt Nigerians are, which I really don't believe that Nigerians are as corrupt as we portray ourselves to be. I believe there are a lot, majority of Nigerians are decent, God-fearing people. Majority of Nigerians are people who just want to have a decent living. But... Hello, Mr. Yetuk. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, um, I, I want to ask you something on the Magus situation. Uh, there are two camps. Um, I had a conversation on Plus Politics the other day, and we're talking about soft landing, considering the position that yes. he holds. Um, and then on the flip side, the issue of justice, um, would that help to, you know, elevate uh, the respect that people have for the anti-corruption fight if this particular investigation is done and is seen to be done as thoroughly as possible. Or he should have given soft landing because he is the, um, the poster boy, so to speak, of the anti-corruption fight. 
Uh, it's probably that my network didn't allow you to get the introduction that I had. And for me, it's, there's a bigger picture. There's so much bigger, much more fundamental. Governance is not about individuals. It's about the generality of the people. I hope I'm heard and clear right now. Could you yes, please indicate yes, if yes. I'm we, we can hearing hear you. you loud and clear? Yeah. Great, great, great. Governance is about the management of our common patrimony in the interest of the generality of the people. And there are certain fundamentals you don't toy with in governance, one of which is foreign direct investment. These foreign direct investments are predicated on certain basic fundamentals, one of which is the justice system of that country. The other one is the people of that country. Are there good people? Are there um, people to do business with? And the fact that we go painting ourselves black all the time before the international communities worries me. So coming down to Magu, I'm not, a, I'm not concerned about soft landing for Magu. This is not about Magu. This is about the poor man on the street. The issue is... If this government had people of tact, the first thing they will understand is that we need to portray ourselves as people who are good people to do business with. As a result, when the Magu case came up and there's a man that has breached the law, if I were an advisor to the Mr. President, I'll call, I'll advise Mr. President to call Magu in-house, show him all the atrocities he's committed, if they are proven, show to what extent he has betray the trust and recover everything that has been taken from him and ask him to very, very honorably resign. When he resigns, it is because of the office he occupies, because of our larger national interest. There are many ways to kill a rat. It just takes strategy and sensibility. All right. As a result... Yes, as a result, we don't portray Nigeria as a country of, of, of criminals. All our crime fighters have been busted, so to speak. If I were a foreigner wanting to invest in Nigeria, please tell me what I would think of this country called Nigeria. Indeed, Why quite a quite, uh, disturbing uh, situation. Uh, let, let's get your thoughts on the uh, federal government's um, position on schools uh, resuming for the wire classes. The very same thing and it bothers me. Let me give you a few timelines. The COVID-19 case, the very first case was in December 2019. Just, just follow my trend of thought. By February, we had the index case in Nigeria. By uh, March, I believe, March 11, the WHO declared a pandemic. Now I'm talking of December, February, March. This God help us, is July. Now, if we had people who understand government and governance and how it works, these are people who sit down and plot and project the future. They plot the different scenarios. And if it's this way, what do we do? If it's the other way, we cannot come in March without understanding a scenario of a possibility of there being a pandemic of, of the covid probably increasing because of the way it works by, by, by July, and we know that the WIAC is coming. Be long before today, conversations would have been had with WIAC because of, of the four other African countries that are involved, seen their scenario, and asked ourselves, can we stop them and postpone long before today? If it is practically impossible to get into an agreement and understanding, we ask ourselves as a nation as it is, can we expose our children to the risk, yes or no? If, if we must bite that bitter bullet and say we've got to shut down in the larger interest of, our, uh, of our, our young ones, then two questions arise. Number one, what do we do with these children? They should have been a game plan. We said they are going to stay at home for one year. That is one side of the story. There's a second side of the story, which means that there are teachers, civil servants, that for no fault of theirs, we cannot stop their salary. We are going to keep them you know, at home and pay them for one year. So what is the plan B? Assuming we stop these children. Now, the next university intake is going to be predicated on certain results that we have suspended. Are we going to also suspend university education for one year? When we put up, you know, interpose or juxtapose all these facts, we, we should have taken, it's not, it's not now that I want to hear these conversations of, oh, do we do this, do we not do that? What I expected is proactive measures 
where even before time, you start to prime our minds, you start to have conversations. If, for instance, by January, February, we would have started saying... If okay, the um, let, let me interject and say that, yeah, we should have done uh, due diligence, but apparently that has not been yeah. done adequately. Yeah. So what would you suggest um, it, it, for the resumption of the universities? Because one of the concerns that have been put forward um, is that yeah. the universities, the higher institutions, are usually overcrowded. So social distancing might be a challenge if we are to open it. So do we say that we go ahead and open and then everybody takes personal responsibility uh, for themselves? Is that a, a, a suggestion you would consider? Uh, there, 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 there are two sets of people involved here. We are talking of primary, secondary, we are with the, which are minors, and we are talking of the, the university, university, which is adults, for goodness sake. To what, when will we treat Nigerian youth as people that must have sense and must take personal responsibility? Are you telling me that you are wondering if the university students will understand the implications, the ramifications, what, what, how it affects them as individuals and take due precaution so that the federal government has to continue to uh, hold them like eggs that must not be broken? Who are university students? Some people that are up to 40 years. Some people that are, in fact, the average age in the university, when you talk of average, I don't think it's less than 30. It should be much lower, but because of the way we, some people are in the university for, for 10 years, sometimes for no fault of theirs. Are you telling me that, okay, why don't we bother about the market women? Oh, will they, what will happen? And shut down everything. Let's learn to tell our people the implications and let's learn the, the, the concept of consequences. So, we, we need to be able to let our people take responsibility for their lives. All right. Give them the information and leave them with the choices. Okay, let, let's move on to the Punch newspaper and see what we can uh, capture there. Um, the big one is also on the Magu situation. The probe, uh, panel probes Magu over alleged ownership of Dubai properties. That's it on your screen now. Um, at the top of the paper, we have uh, slain IRT cops family sues Malami, demands killer soldiers trial. Uh, I'm suspecting that has to do with the Wadumi um, situation. Uh, I might want to read that one. Nigerian students want to resume schools. That's the FG. Electronic payment deals hit 50.3 trillion naira in five months. That's a bit of business for you. Uh, we have other um, reports here. And that's the resumption of flight. Uh, we have fear, caution, uh, complain as airline resumed domestic flights. Uh, there are more headlines here. Uh, seven killed in explosion on NPDC oil platform. And then we have Luth Petitions Panel over failed surgery by cosmetic surgeon. And then Boko Haram kills 20 soldiers returning from Bordeaux operation. Uh, Ondo Assembly suspends three anti-impeachment members. A leader resigns. Okay, I, I, wanna, I want you to speak on the uh, flight uh, situation. Um, um, I'm presuming you, you, you flew down or you went by road. <laughs> I actually live in Abuja, and um, though I do business uh, across, and um, um, uh, the, the, it's about um, different strokes for different folks. The pandemic, in a sense, has been one of the biggest blessings to me as an individual, because for the past 20 years, this is the first time I'm able to sit down with my wife for about three months. I will say that with every sense of responsibility. And what we did in our house was to send up every domestic staff. So I became the man who has to make the guy. And then <laughs> How was that place. experience? And, yeah, it was awesome. I, I didn't know I was that good as, if not that I'm well employed, I would have been very good in a restaurant because <laughs> I washed plates so well that, I mean, some plates we now realize that it was not made in China, it was in Turkey because I washed them that clean. Okay. Anyway, that's um, on the lighter side. Yes. But um, coming down to the airlines, um, we have an economy to run. We ha have lives to live. We have uh, looked at the two sides of the argument that we must live first before we do business. That's extremely correct. But they are not mutually exclusive. We can do business and live. What we needed to do with this pandemic as much as possible was enlightenment. But we concentrate, you see, we, we're a country that runs on contracts, where money is, and not on service. 
if we were a country that runs on service, one of the biggest organizations that should have come up during this period is a national orientation agency. We tell people, oh, there's a um, wash your hands with running water. We just, we just throw out some very, very um, flimsy, pardon my language, you know, um, quotes concerning this pandemic. What I would have expected is people to realize that the pandemic is about immunity to a great extent. How do you boost your body immunity? It's not just wash your hands. When you wash your hands and social distance and go back to a room where there are 10 of you in the same room, I mean, you make nonsense of that. But if you tell how many Nigerians on the street understand immunity, understand the things that will boost their body immunity, understand the, the intricacies, how to avoid, how to stay alive, the, the, the controversy be, you know, behind the, the COVID is too much. There are too many contending and opposing, even within WHO. Today they say it's airborne. The next day it's not. Everybody is confused, <laughs> but there are certain basics. So you, 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 you are, you, from what you are saying, I'm inferring you are a stronger advocate for people to take personal responsibility if we are to beat this and survive economically. That is inevitable. It's a right. given. That's where we start from. Personal responsibility. Let's take a quick look at the Guardian newspaper, see what we can do. Uh, markets stagger over CBN secrecy on Naira devaluation. It has uh, three riders to that story. Pressure hits external reserves amid sustained forex decline. And then experts predict more hardship as import cost rises. Seek multiple foreign exchange sources in agric solid minerals. Uh, that's uh, over the Naira devaluation. We had earlier uh, Mr. Jide Ojo, financial analyst, talk about that, uh, even though the network was um, a bit bad at that period. Okay, um, more uh, headline. Of course, again, the picture of the many passengers uh, ready to fly. Four airlines off to good start, record 70% load factor. Uh, we've also talked about that a bit. FG Backtrack says schools not reopening soon. That's another one um, our guests have spoken on. Uh, Umar replaces Magu as EFCC chairman. And then uh, some other headline. Uh, Kogi Cross River residents in danger over refusal of COVID-19 testing. Uh, let's start with that one. I know it's not the big, big one, but there is this um, seemingly endless controversy when it comes to Kogi and Cross River State, and there seem to be uh, efforts to uh, thwart, so to speak, of the testing of people who might be displaying symptoms. You see, if I was a governor during my second term, I will have to interrogate things that will cripple my economies very well and really get sound advice before because you are a second term governor you're on your way out okay like that of cross river i have to really interrogate if I, if I mean well some days back we see we saw that man crying on television and some to some people it's like uh, like a joke but i have a personal relationship with him and i know how passionate and committed he is and there are certain discussions and he talks look i have just three years to go all the things I thought I could do, I've not been able to do probably half of them. And then comes this thing about pandemic. If it is true that there's a problem, and he happens to be an expert in the field, and a lot of the things he was saying, we are coming back to it gradually. And he says, look, if this is a virus, I'm a virologist, there's a way, there's a pattern. As a result, I'm not going to take this thing that people are doing. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about you know how it's being programmed yeah but but people. but but sorry if, if i may if i may if i may if i may say this i have watched yeah. the commissioner for health in that state on different yeah. channels talk about the yeah. situation and she seemed to be contradicting herself with um the not in that state have said that they're going to go on strike over um the situation and it seems that the ncdc has finally uh, given a case uh, load for it is his perception, is his understanding greater than the good of the people who seems to be expressing a whole lot of concern and medical professionals who seem to have an idea of what's going on? Governance is about <laughs> weighing options and taking decisions, sometimes very hard, sometimes very harsh. And every decision you take as a government, 
must affect some people negatively. If I had advised him or talked with him, I, I would have advocated a closer understanding because the, the health workers must be given every protection. I, I believe that Cross River couldn't have been a, a case of either or. Both could have been, you know, talked to. Both could have been. Now, the medical personnel, what you want is guarantee. What you want is everything to be kitted for your safety. I agree. It's important. It's paramount. So I give you what you want. On the other hand, I'm not going to shut down my state. I'm not going to shut down my economy. I'm not going to, you know, now, even NCDC, that are doing a great job, I must uh, acknowledge, even them are starting to say, okay, let's isolate certain places. Because this general lockdown everywhere doesn't make sense. And that's what was the mindset of the Cross River State Government. The second part would have been probably for him to say, okay, um, okay, let's keep testing where there are specifics. We attack those specifics. It shouldn't have been a general or blanket uh, instruction. So I see what he's doing on one hand. On the other hand, I also notice that when he is confronted with some of these uh, problems, he is able to take correction. He, he right. is able to agree with the people. So he's, um, he's concerned, but he's also willing to make amends where he thinks he's wrong. We, we, any leader should never be afraid to say, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, that, your quick thoughts on the situation with the Naira devaluation. Um, the CBN, I don't the think, Naira, have come out the, officially. The Naira devaluation and the CBN is the story of our lives as a nation, which is that of secrecy, for goodness sake. How do you inspire confidence of investors if they cannot project business? I don't know how we think in Nigeria that business is just what happens like politics. Business is not, I've never held any position in my life. I've been, a, for over 30, 40 years, I've been a private sector person. And I want to tell you that the people in government do not, they've been in government for too long. Be, their money, everything about them, food, cars, everything is provided by the state. So they don't understand how the private sector functions. And unfortunately, when a few of the private sector people get in, they get sucked in by those things. Business operates on certain very key fundamentals and dynamics, one of which is being able to project. And when you cannot tell, I, I'm doing a real estate business right now, and I'm offered very good loans from outside, but I'm afraid to take it because if I'm going to take it at, say, 380 to a dollar today, what will I repay it within the next three years? Will I repay it at 700? It happened to me before when we were doing the Shelter Africa estate. We collected money at 100, and we paid back at 168. And that just scattered up projections. So I think that CBN needs to be less secretive and more affirmative and firm in certain decisions that they take. All right. Um, I'm afraid that's where we'll have to wrap things up at this uh, time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ezekiel, for your time uh, on the program. We appreciate your thoughts. All right. I think he didn't hear me, but that's about how much we can take on the program. Uh, it returns Monday morning. It returns Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, I beg your pardon, uh, being Friday, um, 8.30 a.m. We'll be back with all the latest headline and the help of our guests to make sense of them. Uh, please don't forget to read the papers in depth so you too can you know, add this and other thoughts. Thanks again for your time. Do take care. I'll see you soon enough.